Hey there, my name is Michael and in this video we talk about overcoming fear as a dad. The fearless family man's guide. So we talk about what to expect when expecting, you know, when you're having a baby, what are some real life expectations. We talk about whether you're married or single, whether you're doing it while you're married or you're a single parent, some of the things to expect, some of the challenges that come with both of them, and then some roadblocks. What are some things you're most certainly going to run into? and How can you prepare yourself to handle them? And then your worldview from now on. How do you look at the world from now on, now that you're a dad or you're, you're a family man? And I close the video off with some action items, some things you can do right now to make your life as a dad make this ride a much easier one all right what to expect when expecting your world turned upside down all of a sudden you're expected to be very good at juggling and multitasking right you know all of a sudden things just get a little bit more complicated and it's for sure going to be overwhelming just like anything that you're doing for the first time it's gonna get a little bit chaotic and it's up to you to start implementing certain things to make your life easier and it's easy to also feel like you're stuck in this situation you know it's like man and you, you start missing your old life you know when you're just by yourself single and you can do whatever you wanted to do just be careful not to be tempted by thoughts like that you know that's kind of like a downward spiral you don't want to find yourself in because to be honest even if you don't feel like it it's a gift this thing you're doing like raising a kid it's it's the most wonderful thing anybody can ever do and it's pretty much what everybody is looking for even if they don't say, it. you know, you might think it's all about the money or it's all about having a great career or whatever. The ultimate, the pinnacle is kids, man. Like it's what it, it's what it's all about, man. And if you do it right, it's the most rewarding thing you can ever do. So just because things are changing and things are getting a little bit harder and you constantly looking out for other people, do not let it overwhelm you. You know, train yourself to enjoy the moment and you need to master being in such situations and seeing the beauty in them. There's a very beautiful quote that kind of summarizes everything I'm trying to say here by Goth. And he says, always hold fast to the present. Every situation, indeed, every moment is of infinite value for it is a representative of the whole eternity, no matter how crazy things are going no matter how bad you think it is you're doing the most amazing thing you can ever do you're raising another life you know so take a break breathe in breathe out and just know that this is the beautiful thing all right now what your priority should look like it's crazy how we've just gotten used to handing off the supervision of our kids to the strangers pretty much in the name of education and I don't know, saving time so you can be out there making money or whatever. Usually these people are very underpaid. They don't like their jobs and they're only out there to try and make some money in most cases. And we're okay with it. In his book, uh, Sacred Economics, Charles Eisenstein talks about how daycare center ladies, they're pretty much raising these wealthy not even wealthy families most of them are like middle class families they're raising their kids for them because they're holding them when they cry they're changing their diapers they're feeding them most of the days of the year while the parents are working you know and and this is the book here yeah this book here this is a very good book you can pause the video throw it in your cart get it used it's actually a free, there's a free copy. If you read it off the internet, you can download a PDF off there. Anyway, it's crazy that we're okay with just sending our kids off and just expecting things to kind of work out and the kids to pick up all the best qualities because you're sending them to these very pricey spots or, you know, leaving your kids with a 13 year old girl or boy to babysit them as you go out and hang out, you know, with your friends to have time for yourself. You know, those are the type of priorities we have right now. 
and it's normal and it's fine at least according to standards right now obviously the solution is not so easy to implement you know we have careers we need to take care of our kids we need to provide you want to provide but that's just one of the things you need to be doing more especially when in the formative years of your kids your presence around them is way bigger priority than anything else period more especially if you have certain qualities that you want kids to possess ideology is it's a big deal if you want your kids to see certain things for what they are if you think something is not a normal thing you have to impart impart that in them and instead of just expecting them to go to a certain spot and pick it up no you have to teach that and usually us sending our kids to public school even when we know that they're not getting anything good out of it is going against wanting the best for your kids period not saying it's easy there are alternatives and they're a little bit radical and you need to be willing to step into there and make some pretty difficult decisions but if your family is number 1 you got to make decisions and prioritize things that that give your kids the best shot at making it through this crazy world. All right, now, the mainstream noise. You may be told the kids need crazy toys and the newest thing that's out there, the newest iPads and the newest toy. No, they don't. You know what I mean? And mostly it just ends up becoming a thing that makes you go even more crazy because you're already dealing with all this chaos and now you have a whole mess of toys in the house. Kids don't need that. Kids' needs are very simple. They just want to be loved and shown attention, and they have no problem playing with sticks all day, the, making mud pies in the backyard, big weddings or wedding rings if you're trying to get married. All that is just mainstream noise. You don't need a wedding ceremony. You do not need a ring. The only thing you need is to want to make your relationship work. And half the time, you go to people's weddings. and a year later they're not even together anymore it's like you have your priorities all mixed up if you really just want to make it work you don't need all this extra stuff baby showers expensive vacations to go out to disneyland all of this extra stuff it's nice to have but you don't need it you can do without it okay you can stay home with your kids and have the happiest life of the happiest time of your life period but if you want to fall for like the mainstream marketing that a very consumer centric culture you're going to struggle because you're going to want to keep up with the joneses you want to do what your neighbor did hey my friend tommy from work just came back from disney disneyland with their kids we we'll probably need to do that next year another level of stress it's cool to have and it's nice to want to provide good things for your kids but you don't need it all you need it does it's not a requirement to raise happy kids don't think you need any of that stuff none of it the big house you know the two car garage two cars out there you you don't need over that you know what i'm saying so if you just want to reduce the amount of stress and put everything you have in just loving and being there for your kids and spending time with them and making relationships that's all you need all right the next one is discernment belief in your gut there's a very good book about uh what i just talked about it's called it's uh the paradox of choice by Barry Schwartz this book here this is a very good book again you can pause this video go to amazon you can pick up a audible version you know for $4 or you can get a used copy here for 10 bucks I don't know if you can get a used copy here sorry for $3 very good very very good book you can pause go grab it he says something very interesting in this book that relates to what I'm about to talk about here autonomy and freedom of choice are critical to our well-being and choice is critical to freedom and autonomy though modern americans have more choice freedom and autonomy than any group of people ever has had before we don't seem to be benefiting from it psychologically the accumulation of stuff usually does the opposite of create happiness it mostly it most of the time just causes a lot of depression because you think if you get this thing then you be happy and then you work your butt off stressed out to get this thing and to only just feel 
even more empty. And then it's also very clear with the number of mental disabilities. I think it's called the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual for Mental Disorders. It lists over 300 mental disabilities, which is insane. And we think it's normal. You know, we just come to think, hey, I got ADD, I got ADHD, I got whatever the letters are. And we think it's normal. It's not. We've come to accept these things as, you know, just normal ailments and part of life. We shouldn't be okay with pacifying our kids with drugs, right? Adderall for high schoolers, Ritalin for preschoolers and elementary school kids, all in the name of having them sit still on a desk so that they can, I don't know, learn. It's not normal. That's not okay. It's not normal for adults to rely on stimulants and amphetamines to function. It's not, you know? But we live in a culture that thinks, do whatever you can to achieve so you can get stuff because that's pretty much the goal here is getting stuff. And I blame all this on lack of discernment. We, we cannot look at situations for what they are and you know, kind of see a red flag there. We listen to the professionals or the experts and take whatever they have for us as gospel, right? Put little Johnny on real in so he can sit in the classroom and learn. He's got to go to this good high school. That's the only way he can go to this good university. And that's the only way he can get a good job. And then he can get a whole bunch of stuff. It's not normal. That's not cool. You know, kids are meant to, most especially boys, they're meant to jump up and down and go crazy and put them in an environment that accepts that instead of dragging them pretty much. You know, so the attitude, this attitude of just delegating all the important work, you know, the birth of your kids. Hey, the doctor needs to take care of that. I'm not a professional, right? It's all fear mongering. And that's what this video is about. Education. Hey, these kids need to go to this high school. I don't, I'm not good at this. The professionals said this is the good spot. That's where I got to take my kids. Lack of discernment. So discernment is the, the ability to look at a situation, see all its moving parts, think critically and distinguish the truth from error, and then anticipate the likely outcomes of the choice that you're about to make. That's a little bit more challenging than just believing in the doctor or sorry than just believing in the expert and saying he knows best i don't have to think about all this stuff let's just do what this guy wants or what this guy says is good in his book principles ray dalio talks about not just looking at the first order consequences of a decision right so that's like i'm hungry that cake looks good i want to eat that cake right but instead he talks about considering second and third order consequences. Well, then what happens, you know, 10 minutes after I eat this, well, I get lethargic and I want to lay down and, you know, I got this sugar crash all of a sudden. And then what third order consequences, if I keep doing this, I keep eating the cake for lunch, well, I'm going to get overweight and then I'm going to get sick and I'm probably going to die prematurely. That's how you should start thinking, more especially now that you have a kid and start also imparting these types of thinking on your children because right now it's a mess right like everybody is just pretty much sleepwalking nobody knows what the hell they're doing grab this book principles it's a very very good book and i'm pretty sure there's a used copy down here for five dollars very good book principles ray dalio i'll just finish off this section by quoting stranger in a strange land that's a robert heinlein fiction movie a fiction novel and it gives a very good description of what qualities a man needs to possess. And it's something that we should all aspire to. And he says, a human being should be able to change a diaper, plan an invasion, butcher a hog, can a ship, design a building, write a sonnet, balance accounts, build a wall, set a bond, comfort the dying, take orders, give orders, cooperate, Act alone, solve equations, analyze a new problem, pitch, manure, program a computer, cook a tasty meal, fight efficiently, die gallantly. Specialization is for insects. Do not fall for this specialization culture, more especially if you're a dad. As I said in the first part, you're now like juggling things, you're like multitasking. So get your hands dirty, right? You see that your son's not doing too good from in history class or math class or whatever. 
Well, then start teaching him and be the guy that's looking at the progress of your kid, right? The health of your kids is not too good. Maybe they're overweight or whatever. Well, then watch what you giving them as food, make better meals for them. You're doing all these different things and you're supposed to be doing all these different things. We've been made to believe we're supposed to just focus on our career and delegate everything. No, go back to the mindset of being very discerning. Look at what's going on. If you see it doesn't make any sense, don't wait, jump on it, fix it as soon as possible. Married or single parenting, all right? You can't beat raising kids with a wife. Well, I mean, two brains are better than one. You know, I'm very lucky. I am got married to a very good woman. She's very smart and she, this is just a blessing. You know, it's the best gift I ever received from God on this journey. And it's one of, it's, it's the first step, right? Like the person you have a kid with. And if you do it right, you're going to have a very good uh, time. And if you do it wrong, it, it, it can be very painful, but it's not like you can't get out of it. And by getting out of it, I don't mean divorce. I mean, working on the situation to make it better, right? So having a spouse... It's just, I mean, two brains, right? When you're feeling like you cannot handle this stuff, you have somebody right there to kind of pull the slug and somebody that cares for your kids as as much as you do. It's like equal right there. So it's just the perfect balance of the feminine and masculine. All right, and the next one here is the challenges of single parenting. I know a lot of single parents. You know, when I was getting married, my brother was getting divorced and then they had a kid, one kid. And I, I mean, I, till today, I see the challenges of being a single parent. My wife, her parents were divorced and she has all kinds of stories of growing up with divorced parents. It's, you know, it's not the ideal situation. You don't want to be married and be miserable and have raised kids in a home without love or like an abusive household. That's a whole nother story. Here, I'm assuming if you're married, it's a happy home. Everything is good. But once things break off, it just means, you know, you, you couldn't even handle being together. And there's just so many challenges that come with that. Not just the overwhelming feeling of, you know, maintaining your career while you're trying to pay for bills and taking care of the household, taking care of the kids, cleaning the house and all this extra stuff. And t typically it's mostly finances, right? Like especially if you had two people or you designed it as a two income household and now you split it and you're struggling to, up. it's a nightmare. Single parenting is, it's tough. It's not very easy. And it's one that you want to try to avoid as much as possible. If you can make it work, you, that you make it work because it's going to be very, very, very challenging. So visitation and custody problems are a big thing, right? I feel for people that have take, have had their kids taken away from them. I can't even imagine not having my kids after having them with me this much. Can you imagine that? Like, no, I don't want you to visit. And sometimes that's the case where the woman wins full custody and now you can't even see your own kids. Well, usually you're not just going to give up the fight. You know, you still want to be in the lives of your kids and that causes that much more chaos. Not only in your life, but now in your kid's life. Less opportunities for you to spend time with your kid, you know. The effects of divorce usually affects kids in multiple ways, including school performances. Just their social life takes a hit too. There's a disruption toward extended family relationships. So if you don't see your dad, you're most likely not going to see your grandparents and your uncles or whatever on that side of your family. Because most likely your mom's not going to let you do that if she doesn't want you to have anything to do with your kid. So that takes a hit too. Parents entering new relationships. Now the kids have to deal with this new person who is not their parent. Another level of complexity. It's a challenge and it's unfortunate because most of marriages are disrupted or they're they end up in divorce over very dumb stuff. Mostly ego and pride driven things. Where if you just are willing to work on it, you're not even going to break up. Selfish reasons. I need to find myself, right? I need to fly to Thailand and think about what I need to do. Very selfish. People do that. Leave their families to go find themselves. Ridiculous. But anyway, it's, it's challenging. That's just the nature. If you're going to be a single parent, you're going to be fighting battle by yourself. That was meant to be fought by two people, right? 
So it's just going to be that much more complex. It's not impossible. People do it. It's very, very challenging. All right. Butting heads with your... It's sort of crazy, right? As an institution to pick one person and be with them for the rest of your life. Usually at an age when you don't know yourself, really. Why people try to fly to go to find themselves. And then kids, right? Where two people replicate themselves and make a baby. Insane. So how do you make it work? How does marriage survive? Because you are going to be button heads with your spouse. You living together, there's going to be friction. Not negotiable. It doesn't mean you run out of it every time you butt heads. It's about making it work. So how do you make it work? You know, how are you going to make it survive the insane pressures of life, you know, careers, you know, these other external stuff? Well, you're going to want to have it. You're going to want to make it work. And then you're going to have to give it the respect it deserves. Like once you say your vows, what you're saying is that you're now stuck with this person forever. And you got to take it seriously. If it's just, I'm only with you as long as I'm, you're giving me happiness, you're most likely going to break up because you're not, you don't understand what you're getting yourself into pretty much. You know, it only works when both people are trying to help their spouse without wanting anything in return right that's love unconditional you just want to give 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 and expect nothing and if both people are trying to give 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 well then you got a perfect situation there and if you are coming into a marriage expecting for it to give you happiness that's another thing you need to overcome right you need to come into this situation fully fulfilled right like you need to be happy find happiness elsewhere and then bring it here because here in a marriage in a family it's a side effect of it but you, you're not coming in it to get happiness kind of like working out working out for looking good is kind of dumb if you're just working out to look good it rarely lasts i just want to look good uh, for the summer well once that summer is done what's the point of all the working out but if you look at it for more longevity you want to live a longer life and you want to feel better that you're going to work out for a way longer time longer time and then still look good so that's just like a side effect of it so find happiness elsewhere bring it into your marriage that way you have you know two happy people or at least you are happy and then you're giving she's giving it's done right without wanting anything in return it, it's a challenge for sure right but does it give a whole lot in return hell yeah you know you'll be way happier and less prone to conflict. And you just want to reduce the amount of conflict you have with your spouse. Ask for little in return and lose yourself in giving, right? That's as simple as I can put it. All right, making your situation work. Somebody way smarter than me once said, I don't really know of many happy marriages, but there are a lot of marriages where parents love their kids. You know, in such a marriage, your kid misses out on a very, very important lesson. You know, a very, very powerful example, which is one which Howard W. Hunter, I think he was involved with the Church of Latter-day Saints. I don't know if he's still alive. But anyway, he said the best, one of the greatest things a father can do for his children is to love their mother. You know, there's all kinds of families now. We just talked about the single family, the regular married family now the scope is extended we have blended families we have trans families there's poly families out here gay families and to each their own there's all kinds of families out here how do you make it work the truth of that sentiment doesn't change whatever type of family you're in the best thing you can do for your kids is to love the person who brought them into this world i know i might be asking a whole lot for you but it, it is what it is you know what I'm saying? How do you think your kid is going to be taking it when you're talking all kinds of crap about their mom? You know what I mean? Bare minimum, just respect. Like, respect them and don't talk crazy shit about them around your kids. That's the best thing you can do. Love the person that you're co-parenting with or who you're parenting with. Even if you're, not, not, even if you're no longer with that family or if that person deeply hurt you or betrayed you. You must love the person that's responsible for a very good chunk of your kid's DNA. You must love, and that's how they know that they're loved, right? Be the example, and that's how you make it work. What's required of you? Money, 
just how important is it? The standards are pretty high, more especially if you're just looking at these people that are living this amazing life. It's kind of like a virtual vasectomy. You know, you're pretty much being neutered because all of a sudden you think, hell, I can't afford this. Hell, I'm not having kids. Forget about it, right? Until I can get a Tesla or until I can get this house, then I can have kids. We are pretty much paralyzed by these flashy images. And that's another one of the outcomes of our modern day culture, Western culture, at least as, as it stands right now. We're accustomed to seeing the end product, right? A lot of these, there's a lot of fake people out there faking it, but a lot of them are real. They probably work very hard to get to where they are, right? But we did not see the process. We only get to see that end part where they have this giant house or they have, they're in a private jet or whatever. And now we think we need to be there for us to have a family. So the real lessons are in what we don't see. That's where the real lessons are. And that's the sad situation too, right? What did they go through? A lot of them did have family. Maybe the fact that they even have family is what pushed them to get to where they are now. You know, kids, they are fuel. And for sure, they will light a fire under your ass and have you moving to be better. You don't want to just have kids for the sole purpose of having them fuel you. But if you do have them, it's a reason to wake up in the morning to go out and bust your ass and be better. And of course, it's that's the ideal situation, right? Get your th life together, get your house, find a wonderful wife. You have all the you don't you're financially free, then have kids. That's the ideal situation. I'm not arguing that, but that's not the reality of. Uh, a lot of us that gets thrusted into being a dad. So what do you do then when you have a kid and you don't have it all together yet? That's the, a lot of people walk away from their families because of that type of thinking, right? Deadbeats. It's this type of thinking that creates people that walk away from their families. So when you feel like you're doomed and you cannot even fight, you, you're paralyzed and you just feel like you don't even want to deal with it, but you need to fight, right? You need to appreciate the situation you're in and be thankful because this is the end. This is what everybody wants. People want families. You have one. Now just fight as hard as you can to keep it together. As I say, the opening of this video was talking about how bare minimum you need to run the family. You don't need much, right? And what you need, you can get. You can afford a whole lot of stuff. If you can just keep a job, that's just number one. And then if you can just be ambitious and go out after a big goal, you can even do some of the most amazing things out here. There's a nice saying by another wise person that's way wiser than me. I don't know who's credited for this, but it says, show me a man who can't read and I will show you a poor man. If you're smart enough to be watching a video like this, you're smart enough to pull yourself out of whatever situation you are in right now, however shitty it is. It takes a lot of time and it takes a lot of hard work, but it's doable. You know, have very realistic expectations and then hold a job, have a big goal, right? Keep the dream alive and love your family, stay with them and you'll be surprised with what happens. And then another problem with like looking at these people that have it all, on the internet, right? The wonderful people of the internet. There's usually a different kind of poverty. I'm not saying it's everybody, but usually what it means when you're making that much money or you're working that hard, you get lost in it. And most of the time it becomes an, like an, an escape. You don't spend time with your family because you're doing business, you're traveling all over the place, you're working long hours to build this thing and pile up the cash. That's a whole nother kind of poverty right there. Just because you have a big house doesn't mean you have it all figured out. Or just because you have a whole bunch of money doesn't mean that your, you know, your family is, is, is good. Yeah, they're good financially, but then you find out that money only solves your money problems and there's all these other problems that you are required to be at home and to be available and have a relationship with your kids that's how you fix all these other problems right imagine having all your material needs taken care of 
but you barely see your kids, let alone you don't even know each other. And this is a very painful and very devastating poverty, right? Even if we live in luxury. And it's also very shameful because it's something that's under our control. It's something that you don't have to live in if you don't want to, at least with your own kids. So yeah, you know, we want to have cash. We want to provide for our kids. We want to take care of their financial needs. But above that, there's stuff that's way more important, you know? stuff that your kids need from you because money is just one of the things that's required and you don't need a whole bunch of it you can have big goals and you can achieve great things and you can do all these amazing things and take your kids on amazing vacations but you don't need that much right love relationships keep your family together do that then chase your big dreams all right health feeding your kids there's a tendency in uh just pacifying your kids making them happy with safe food right we live in the, the fast food nation you don't want to feed your kids fast food you don't want to do that it's not only detrimental to their health it's detrimental to your health get them off fast food and i've seen the tendency of pacifying kids with not just devices but with food right give them candy get them out your face let them go hang out and play out there Right. Or if your kid is, you know, being defiant, you give them food because that's their favorite food. You want your kids to be healthy. You want your kids to be sharp. How you try to be sharp if you're on some good diet, that's what the kids need too. And we need to get away from this normalcy bias where just because we have McDonald's down the street, then it's okay to take our kids there and feed them junk. No, you know, and the American family changed, you know, in the 1920s where everybody started working and everybody was very busy to do and nothing else. So the introduction of fast food was, it came at the right time. It was like a perfect timing for any business person. And then everybody's pretty much buying pre-cooked food, but we know the detrimental side of that type of food. There's all kinds of additives, the ingredients are shitty, you know, very inflammatory and very calorie dense. So kids right now are getting type 2 diabetes. Kids, you know, overweight kids. You don't want that for your kids. You want healthy kids. And to get healthy kids, you got to feed your kids healthy food. If you already have your kids on like junk food, it's going to be painful in the beginning when you make the change, right? But kids adapt very quick and they'll fall in line you want to be different you don't want to again discernment you just don't want to follow the crowd look at what's going on what happens when you give these kids this food right change start getting in the habit of making home cooked meals it's fun teach your kids to make meals right and they love it kids have fun you know scrambling eggs making potatoes and fries or whatever kids like doing it if they made it they're most likely gonna eat it so be different choose different pick a diet or whatever you know teach them to read food labels because half the stuff hell 95 percent of the stuff in the grocery store now it's like there's something hidden in there that is not supposed to be there and if you want your kids to be healthy they gotta eat healthy food and you gotta be very vigilant it's a very simple one this one whole foods are the best choice you know if you gotta read a label on it you know you're probably diving into a very a very dangerous territory you don't know what's in these things education all right so education nourishing curiosity so yeah i mean i touched a little bit about education education already but again, it's all about discernment, seeing what's going on. Heyman G. Rickover. All right, yeah, this guy here. Heyman G. Rickover was an admiral in the United States Navy. Yep. And directed the original development of naval nuclear propulsion and controlled its operation for three decades as the director of the U.S. Naval Reactors. Very, very wise man. And he had this to say about education. Any system of education which does not inculcate moral values simply furnishes the intellectual equipment whereby men and women can better satisfy their pride, greed, and lust. Our education system is broken, right? They don't teach God in schools, you know, unless you choose a private school, a Christian school. But most public schools do not teach morals and ethics. Matter of fact, they teach the reverse. 
there's a whole bunch of alternative ideologies that are being pushed in schools, which most parents don't agree with. But we're still willing to take them to that school because, hey, what do you want me to do? I mean, I got to work, I got a career or whatever. So education should be about morals and ethics first, right? Doing the right thing. Everything else is secondary. You want to raise good people first and foremost, and then everything else kind of works itself out from there. So if you find that whatever education system or whatever modality you choose for your kids is not doing that, it's probably in your best interest to not have them do whatever that is. Find something else. It's, it seems like a very hard thing, but it's, it's that easy. There's so many alternatives right now, so many. And more especially after the COVID in 2020, we saw just what these kids are doing in schools. It's not much. And it's not just, it's, it's in universities, in, it, it's in higher learning institutions as well. There's a nice book here. It's called Courage to Grow. I forget the author. This book here, Courage to Grow. This lady took her kids to some public school and they were not really getting what she wanted for them. And I think her kid was called dumb or whatever for she he might have had some learning disability and then she put her she put the kid out and pretty much invented a new way of teaching kids which is very radical no teachers at all and you just let the kids teach themselves with like a supervisor in the classroom who does nothing in there pretty much just standing there if kids need i don't know something that they cannot handle by themselves or just to kind of keep the peace. It's a very good book for any parent that's looking into alternatives to the current education system. It blew my mind. That's just one of them. You can homeschool. Kids are naturally curious and all you can, if you really, really want them to love learning, all you can do is provide the resources and have them pick what they want and dive into whatever they're interested in. And uh, it's about priorities again. See what it is you want for your kids. And morals and ethics first, if where you have your kids right now is not providing that, because you want good people, right? You want good children. If they're not providing that, find an alternative. There's so many alternatives now. It's insane. All right. And then love. What it love, what it should look like. So when we think of discipline, we think about that stern parent, right? The guy who's always saying no and, you know, always the militant dad in the household, right? And love and discipline are kind of pulling at each other, right? We want our kids to be very disciplined, but at the same time, we don't want to traumatize them, right? We want to show them as much love as possible. But, you know, if you want to go that route, go ahead. As long as you keep love top of mind, you want to be loving unconditionally right get loose take it easy you know and don't you don't need to be that stern dude you know you want to i look at it as you want somebody that wants to let you know everything they're doing you want your kids to be that open that they want to tell you everything they're doing and that comes with loving them you need to show them that unconditional love right loosen up get to their level get down on one knee look them in the eye and talk to them softly and let them understand what they're doing, whether they're doing the wrong thing or the right thing. You know, you, you don't have to be this person that they're scared of. Believe in them. You know, kids are very capable. They just need a little direction. They're experimenting. They're new to this thing. Can you imagine being five years old, just being on earth for five years? Imagine that kind of inexperience. They need you the most right now, right? When, more especially when they're younger. When they get to their teens, it's more of like a coaching role, right? Like you're kind of directing them, seeing what it is they're gravitating towards, and just kind of giving them the guide. You can have that attitude too when they're younger, but they just need a lot more structure when they're younger. But you got to believe in them because they have the capabilities to do it. They, If you made it and they were pretty much cut off your cloth, they came from you and if you're capable they're probably even more capable without love nothing will work it'll be they'll pretty much fight anything you try to put out there with everything they got you know kids are fighters if it's coming from a place of like control or you're being condescending kids sense it and it's going you're going to have a hard time again you know you want them to be the kids that come and ask questions and tell you how their day was right and then if you're some controlling prick, 
don't have a hard time. No one will ever regret the love and kindness they showed their kids. No one. No one will ever look back and think they did too much of that. On the contrary, there's a whole host of parents that wish they did more of it, right? Spend more time with their kids, hug them more, just chilled out and just let the kids be you know love is like a verb it's what you do the experiences you have with them it'll be all over very soon because they grow up and they'll leave and you don't want to regret what you're doing right now so just take it easy and love a lot it's free just give it all right so now we talk about some roadblocks and the first one being resistance. A really good book for anybody doing anything creative, which I think being a pioneer is because there's a lot of moving parts and everybody does it different. It's kind of like an art. So there's this book, it's called The War of Art by Stephen Pressfield. Great book, my wife gave me this book. This little book here, a vital gem, a kick in the ass. All right. So he says, any act that rejects immediate gratification in favor of long-term growth, health, integrity, any act that derives from our higher nature instead of our law will elicit resistance. Stephen Pressfield. Raising kids is probably the highest nature will ever demand of you. You literally in charge of bringing life into the world, right? And molding it and turning into a thing. And in terms of a project, there are very few that are as long term as raising kids. You only see the results of the small decisions you're making right now, years from now, right? And you kind of don't even see it because it's very dynamic. There's going to be a whole lot of resistance, putting things off, you know, procrastinating, delegating things that you most likely shouldn't be delegating. That's resistance. Unfortunately, there's no pill to fix resistance or you know, this pressure that comes from to do anything awesome, this external pressure to get you off track of doing something amazing, of creating something beautiful. I wish there was a pill. As of now, the only solution is to face it and handle it. Show up every day and give it everything you got, right? You only have one shot at this. You cannot afford to screw it up. The madness of the crowd. In a crowd, madness is the norm if you look around and everyone else is doing it it takes a lot of courage to question things to question the norm when we're in doubt we're hardwired to look around what everybody else is doing and then to try and fit in you're gonna want to fight that urge you want to do the opposite fight the temptation to try to fit in because as i say most of the time it's craziness don't try to make your kids fit in you know, you want your kids to stand out. Let them be a little weird. Let them do stuff that doesn't really seem to be the norm. That's the only way they can express that uniqueness. You know, be unique as well. Don't feel like you need to do what everybody else is doing. You need to be doing what's good for your kids. You need to be doing what's right. That's what you need to be doing. All right, I'm just going to go through this real quick here. This video is going on a little longer than I anticipated, but it's okay. You like it, right? Yeah. Like, comment. Let's keep this moving. Next, culture is the enemy. So kids are looked at as a nuisance in modern day culture. Like as, they, as it stands right now, nobody's trying to have kids because it's like they're annoying. They destroy things. They, you know paint the walls with crayons and they pretty much make a mess of everything right you have them sit at the kids table thanksgiving have them throw them on the kids table because they have no place here at the adult table so kids are kind of just pushed aside and they're like this p pin in the butt god is dead in this culture and if you believe in god and his son jesus christ you're a weirdo and it's like you know nobody wants to associate with that weirdness we're desensitized to violence not just by not just in movies it started with movies but if you scroll award star hip-hop hell youtube instagram there's people getting shot i'm not talking cgi here real life cops shooting people gang violence all kinds of crazy stuff war we're pretty much watching war on our smartphones right we see people getting popped in Ukraine and it's like, what the hell is going on? And it's like, 
you just walk to your kitchen and have lunch like nothing happened. So violence is just like another thing. We're sexualized at a very, very young age. It's in, it's everywhere. It's anybody that's trying to sell something is going to use some type of sexual image. You start seeing it at a very young age. The abundance of pornography, it's everywhere. It's on TikTok. It's on Twitter, on X. It's everywhere. And it's, it's normal, right? It's just, it's cool. That's, that's just the culture we live in. This is what you're going to have to fight. You know, these are the forces you're fighting just by being born in 2024. By being a pine in 2024, these are the things that you have to shelter your kids from. You know, I know there's people that are like, you know, you don't have to shelter your kids. Be very careful with people that say that, you know, just send them out there to try and figure this out, to try and figure this out. Try to go back, you know, being 10 years old or 15 even. Try to imagine what's going on in a 10 year old mind being exposed to all this craziness, right? And try to empathize because we need to protect our kids from these things, right? And then when you choose as the parent, then you can bring it up and teach it to them in a manner that show them the whole picture, right? Instead of just what's going on, saying like in public schools right now, where in some states, parents are not even supposed to be informed when say their kid changes their pronoun. They're not even supposed to inform you about that or their libraries carrying all kinds of sexualized literature, which you don't you're not supposed, I'm not, I'm not for banning books or burning books, but it's like, if I'm the parent, let me be the one to decide when I think my kid is ready to learn this stuff. So you're going to want to shelter your kids from culture, Western culture, modern day culture, which is pretty much worldwide now because Hollywood is like, it's taken over. I mean, I was in Africa when I was a kid and I started watching movies a long time ago and it's all I know, you know? I know more about American culture, probably more than I know about my own culture, because I grew up on movies and music and everything that's Hollywood. And they did a very good job on, you know, of turning the world into thinking, oh, this is normal. It's okay to just shoot somebody in the head or like, you know, you, you can just see violence and walk away or sexualized images all over the place. It's all cool. You know what I mean? God, God is just this imaginary thing. It's just another fairy tale. And uh, don't have kids. That's a big message. Like, do not have kids is a very big message. You got to, you want to travel the world. You want to do all these awesome things. Kids are going to get into that. So you grow up being trained to lead, to exist in such a world. And then now you get to a certain age where you want to experience life fully. You want to have kids, but you have this external force fighting against all these urges, which are very godly urges. That's what we're here to do, right? We want to care. We don't want to, you know, just see somebody get shot and, I don't know, go eat the bowl of cereal or whatever. Anyway, you have to fight against all these forces and you have to protect your kids from them. And it's going to be tough, but it has to get done. All right, spiritual warfare, right? It's what it is, if you ask me. It's spiritual warfare. So temptations are alive and well, the flesh the world and demons. So spiritual warfare. So you're fighting against your urges, the flesh. You're fighting against the world, right? What the world is imparting on you, the, the, what the world is trying to uh, mold you into, you're fighting against that. And then you're fighting against principalities, right? As, you know, Paul in Ephesians says, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. That's what we're fighting here. This is just not a, like a boxing match. This is bigger than that. And you, it'll be, you, you cannot do it by yourself. You really need God on your side, right? And a lot of people think just because they have kids, then kids make them tougher. You get thick skin, you know, Kids have the ability to do that, but you, you make that choice. And it's clear. We can see that there's a lot of people that walk away from their responsibilities that just abandon their kids because they don't even want to handle that. And there are even more dads that stayed, but they pretty much just checked out. 
right? They're just kind of like another kid in the house, making messes, eating sandwiches, and not really, you know, creating traditions and molding a family. You know what I'm saying? Just because you have kids doesn't mean you're ready to rise up to that level of responsibility. You need help. You know, you need God. We all have this hole, the God-shaped hole, right? Trying to fill it in with all kinds of stuff, toys. We talked about big houses and cars. And no matter how many of those you throw in there, it's not going to do nothing. That hole can only get filled in by God. And then sometimes if you struggle and then you get this extra responsibility of being a parent, you end up amplifying everything else that you struggle with right? Say you have an eating disorder or you have an alcohol problem. The stress of having kids might actually exacerbate, it might actually increase that urge because you're trying to run away from that stress. So now you find yourself falling more into these bad patterns, drinking way more, eating a lot of junk and all this other stuff that we use to kind of numb ourselves from facing the real world that's resistance right you're gonna try to find anything else to do but the task at hand the classic procrastination trait you're gonna want to clean the house instead of sitting down to read a book or spend time with your kids and just play legos with them you're gonna want to do anything but the task at hand oh no i gotta go mow the grass no i gotta work overtime instead of just sitting there and forming relationships building real relationships with your kids it's spiritual warfare we wrestle not against flesh and bones but against principalities right against the rulers of the darkness of this world spiritual warfare but you have the blueprint right jesus christ showed us that it's possible to fight against temptation in the desert fasting 40 days and 40 nights and he was able to say no i'm not going to listen to you I'm going to do what needs to be done. And you can learn from that. It's doable. Don't get paralyzed. Open the Bible. Look around in there. There's no rules about how to attack the Bible, how to learn from it. Open it. See, just browse, and then you'll be surprised with how things are just made easy for you. All right, now, your worldview from now on. Your priorities have radically changed right now. So for anything to run well, you have to be healthy, period. You know, like if you're unhealthy, you're overweight, you're eating bad food, you are not going to be productive at all in anything you do, let alone being a good parent, being a good dad. And it's pretty easy. You know, we try to just complicate things here. Will simplifies it in his book, Recapture the Rapture. He simplifies it and he says, you want to sleep deeply? Move often, eat well, grieve fully, make love, get outside. That's it. These are just some very straightforward things that are very constant. You, these, these have always been true. You know, you can go to like a professional biohacking dude that charges a hundred thousand dollars for a consultation, and these things are. You need to be doing these things for pretty much any of their advice to work to help you be better. You gotta sleep. Sleeping is like, you. that's how you recharge, right? And then you gotta eat well because what we eat is what we're made of. So if you eat dum-dums, right, and fudge rounds, well, then you're made of that. So you wanna eat good food and then you wanna consume good information too because that's kind of like the food for the brain, right? That's eating well. And then grieve fully. Like if you're going through some stuff, don't have that tough guy mentality of, you know, a couple of beers solving your problems. No, be in it, feel it. If it calls for you to cry, cry. You know what I mean? Grieve fully. And then get married, have a wife and make love. It's, you need it. It's a need. And that's one thing that I keep wondering with dudes that are single late. It's like, what, you good with just, I don't know, constantly go being with these strange people, chasing chicks. You know what I mean? Get married. Have a partner. Get outside in the sun. We're meant to be outside. We are nature. We're part of it. You know what I mean? So be out there. Get out of your room instead of playing video games all day. Go out to the park with the kids. You know, kick the soccer ball around, play basketball, whatever it is you like doing out there. Go for a hike. 
And if you do these things and do these things, instead of worrying about a pill or supplements or whatever the newest one is, or Zempic, right? Do these things and you'll be surprised with how great you feel before you even do all the extra stuff, you know? All right, so providing, you do need to provide for your family. That's your job. But again, let's not make that an excuse to be absent from our families. You need to figure this out. You have to, and it's a very, very big one. The epidemic of fatherlessness doesn't just mean the people that get divorced. There's people that are living together. I may have touched on it earlier in this video, but they're miserable. They don't know their kids. They don't have a relationship with their kids or their spouse. They're constantly gone in the name of, you know, piling up some cash for their family. So they think they can just get away from everything else and just focus on money. Figure it out. Bring in the cash because you need it. Your kids need it. And then be there too. It's not negotiable. That's just how it, it goes. You know, if you want to, if family is first, you got to be there and love your spouse. You got to love your spouse. You show your kids that you show her love and that's how they know that they're loved too. And the future is what you make it, right? It appears like it's so far out in the you know, future, the future. It looks like it's so far out. You know, it, it's sometimes even difficult to think about what you're going to be doing two weeks from now, right? Or what things are going to be like two weeks because things change so fast. But it's nice to just know that, you know, the few weeks, hell, few decades from now is just like, it goes, we get there just like that. You know, before you know it, it'll be 20 years in the future and you're just looking around like, hey, what? Did all, where did all this time go, right? Your kids will be grown. Maybe you even have grandkids. You'll be older someday. What will you want then? How will you want things to be? What do you want to be able to do with your family? What do you want your legacy to look like? Will you have the relationships that allow you to do that? Will your kids want to be in your life? We can fantasize about all the awesome things we want to do with our kids and grandkids when, you know, we're older and retired and just hanging out somewhere in a nice... But if today, right now, while you're younger and working and raising the kids, if you're a miserable, self-absorbed jerk, none of that is ever going to happen. Though the future looks like it's way out, it's the things you do right now that determine all those future goals you have, right? Do you wanna hang out and play Legos with your son or go out for happy hour after work? Do you wanna help him out with that uh, craft? Or do you just wanna sit on the porch drinking beers? Do you wanna keep eating junk food? You know, being sleep deprived, sick every other week because you cannot take care of yourself. You don't wanna exercise or anything like that. No matter how we foresee the future, we need to make the right decisions now. And then you wanna act accordingly, all right? Accepting the call to fatherhood. So will you do it? You know, are you gonna man up and be a good leader for your family? Because they need you, for sure. Society needs you. We need people, right? And that's a logic that people don't get. And we see countries like China suffering the fate of not having kids. You know, they had that one child policy. And on top of that, when they had kids, they were only trying to have one kid. And then over those, like, it was open season on abortions whenever you find out you're having a girl child. So right now they have a whole bunch of dudes, there's no girls, and then there's a whole bunch of older people with nobody to take care of them. You know what I mean? So society itself needs strong families with strong leaders. And then, so it, it is under attack, as I just told you, with culture. They're pu it's pushing back on what has been tried and tested and been found to work. So you need to be there to stand firm and fight against that, right? You need to fight back. You know, what everybody is looking for is to love and to be loved. Everything else is just noise that's crowding out the signal. This is, uh, it, it's one hell of a job, right? It's very beautiful. And then it needs to be taken seriously. It's not easy though, right? Some of the greatest people out here, Buddha, right? The great Buddha, he was overcome by resistance. He was a deadbeat is what he was. He walked out on his family. He, matter of fact, he didn't even say goodbye to them because I don't know, he had to start this movement. That's what resistance can do right? Just failing to take care of your family. He failed to be a dad, but then was it worth it then? Do you think he 
died a peaceful dude having walked away from his family so are you gonna accept the call and if i were you i would and get on this journey because it is the pinnacle like this is the next level you know right this is like the top it's family all right so next let it change you or let it change you for the better so you're in a new league so act accordingly you leveled up you cannot be on the fence you're either all in or you all out period it's okay to say no to burning time at your local bar for happy hour with the boys or whatever and go home and cook a meal for your kids right play a board game and if they have a problem with that they're probably not very good friends you might want to just cut those ties totally right constantly improving what it is is self-improvement you want to be better right because kids learn mostly from watching so you want to be an example instead of being the guy that tells your kids to do certain things be the guy that's an example right you want your kids to read more well you might want to have your kids see you nose to book often instead of out there scroll a channel scrolling or at least on netflix trying to find the next best tv show or whatever so whatever qualities you want in your kids you might want to be the guy that shows those qualities right you want your kids to be outdoors more often well then you be out there you want your kids to exercise exercise and be in front of them at home and let them see that instead of just telling your kids what they need to do right matter of fact 90% of the things that you tell them, they're not even going to do it. But a good chunk of what they see in you, they want to emulate you. Your kids, they adore you. You're like, they're Superman and they want to be like, you, even if they don't say, you know, that's why you find your kids going through your pockets and your books, your book bag or whatever, you know, getting in your shoes, right? You are adored. So they'll do the things that they see you do. So be a good example constantly be better it's not just good for you it's good for the whole household and just like anything else that's worth having it's gonna be hard you know you need to learn to love doing hard things you know it's gonna hurt sometimes so you need to develop thick skin because uh you're not just gonna get away with things anymore and sometimes you're gonna have to take the blame for things that you didn't even do but you get stronger from it you know just kind of like when you break a, a a personal lifting record in the gym and right it, it it hurts you might even want to pass out when you do it but when you go home get some good sleep eat good come back to the gym you're stronger from it right so whenever there's that hard challenging situations in the family you grow from it and you become a better person most of the lessons come from adversity and then whenever you go through it you become better stronger and more capable of building a beautiful thing you know a beautiful family right you have to keep improving to keep up with your kids in other words focus on getting your shit together there's no running away here love them be around them you know have traditions and routines your kids will learn more from that you having experiences with them than they will ever learn in any Ivy League daycare or Ivy League university out there. All right, we made it, guys. Thank you for sticking around this long. I hope you're getting value from this video, by the way, because I know it went a little too long, but I, it's the only way I had to do this one. I tried to shrink it in, but it, it was just going to be useless at that point. But anyway, some action items. Get your Bible. If you don't have a Bible, you want to get it you know and then look around it it's a very very interesting book the bible you know and you're learning lessons about the power of god through these men that are very flawed you know and then they end up doing some pretty amazing things and some people end up doing some pretty horrible things in there so you see just where what direction your life might take depending on what decisions you make so get your bible open it read it there's free versions on the internet go there get in the habit of just in the morning read your bible verse you know go back think about what your day was like kind of like having a gratitude practice and then all the books that i talked about in here if you didn't pause and get them you know go back and get them right you can get audio versions or you can go on sites that summarize books for you and they can tell you like uh, they can give you the gist of the book you know but if i were you i'll just give me a copy and i 
own the thing for the rest of my life for like three dollars or whatever and then uh, and lastly when i started this youtube channel the end of 2023 and i don't really i didn't really know what direction to take it i didn't know what kind of format to create these videos i didn't even know if there's any interest for this type of content but i felt called to do something about this i've looked around and there's really not many resources that, that give real life expectations of being a dad there's a lot of need out there for people that are getting into the world of being a parent to just be told they're doing good or at least what they're doing is actually important and to just stick with it right so I couldn't find any good resource. I figured I should make it myself. Being on YouTube, it's easy to scroll through these videos and just kind of get a feel good hit, you know, get a little hit of dopamine and you feel good about it. You just scroll to the next one and you even forget about what you were watching or what you learned from a certain video. So I'm going to have a group where I'm going to have people like minded you know, new dads, older dads, dads, people that want to have kids to just exchange knowledge, right? Exchange tips and just talk. And then uh, maybe even most information that we cannot even post here on YouTube because we know a lot of these platforms. You cannot say certain things. You cannot talk about certain things without being penalized for it. So if we have like a safe place, I don't know what platform I'm going to put it in. So what you can do for now, you can either comment if you want to be part of it and then we can have a group and it only starts with one person. The moment I have one person say yes, they want to be part of it. It'll be me and you and then we can grow this thing. So you can either leave a comment saying you want to be interested and I can message you back. The goal is to take it off these media platforms that are very noisy. Cause like YouTube gets very noisy sometimes and it's hard to tell the real from the fake, right? Same thing as Facebook. So for now, I just want to know if you're interested and if you're interested, I can message you back email or right here in the comment section. And with that being said, thank you very much for sticking it out this long. It means a lot to me. I really care about making content like this. You know, it helps me hopefully helped you in some way and it just helps hopefully everybody it helps everybody stay accountable because that's the goal at least for me for creating this to constantly know that what i'm doing is the right thing and it's important and it should be done right i will see you on the next one thank you very much